Do you ever have trouble getting out of the bed? Just not in the mood? Just want to lay there? Do you ever wake up already pissed off and wanting to kick holes in the wall, especially during the work week? This could be part of your problem. You're looking at a molecular structure of serotonin. And what I'd like to do now is go into a little bit of discussion about serotonin and give you just a few facts on this molecule that does so many things in our bodies. Now, the first thing is we're accustomed in our culture, in North America for sure, and quite likely Europe and other countries, of hearing about serotonin with relation to the central nervous system. We tend to think of it as this molecule that just swims around swims around in our brains, interacting at synaptic clefts of neurons, and then setting off biological chemical cascades that modulate mood and anxiety. And that's true, and there's an entire class of medications called the SSRIs, Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors, that are designed to increase the amount of this that's available in your CNS fluid. But you may not have been aware that actually 90% of this molecule resides in the gut where it's made. It's made by enterochromaffin cells, which take L-tryptophan from your diet and put it through a biochemical reaction mechanism that yields serotonin. In the gut, it's responsible for modulating gut motility. It's not too far afield that many of the SSRI medications that interact with receptors that this molecule interacts with have adverse reactions like nausea, vomiting, um, and I'll leave the rest of the GI side effects to imagination. Interestingly, this molecule is also produced more in your body when you have ample levels of sunlight. So seasonal affective disorder, which is something that hits me every year, is subtended by lowered amounts of this. And that is why light therapy can help with SAD along with medications. This comes from L-tryptophan. However, the interesting thing is when you are low on serotonin, your body, actually your brain, wants comfort foods, typically high in carbohydrates and sugars, which is unique because Carbohydrates and sugars are not proteins. L-tryptophan is an amino acid that comes from protein. Now, we see the interplay between serotonin and dopamine in this way. Mood can be enhanced through dopamine as well. And those sugars and carbohydrates definitely lead to dopamine release. I did a video on it and that'll be linked in the description. Now, serotonin just doesn't affect your mood. It affects your sleep, your memory, your eating habits, your recovery from wounds even. So this one molecule, very simple in structure, we find doing many, many things. You can try to get some more of this through sunlight, through diet, also through exercise, as we'll see in a moment, but there are certain foods that can help with serotonin deficiency, such as eggs, salmon, nuts, anything that's rich in tryptophan. Your Thanksgiving turkey that at the time of this recording will be coming soon. Now, serotonin helps you behave better under pressure. And this is why I did the lead in with, do you ever want to kick holes in the wall in the morning before anything's even happened? Just thinking about going to work. So in times of stress, this can go a long way to calm you down. That's why it's also, SSRIs are also prescribed as anxiolytics. They deal with anxiety. So on the spectrum of serotonin deficiency, you have a bit of a seesaw 
between depression and anxiety. It's very complex and I'll get into it in another video, but that's just one more thing that this very simple structure does. Now, just a little bit of exercise every day can boost your serotonin levels. So let's say you just go for a 20 minute walk. Bingo. You get some more serotonin out of that weight lifting. And in this case, with exercise, the beta endorphins also play into that mood increase. So one of the best ways to get out of a depression hole is actually to get up and move. The very thing that depression makes you not want to do. Too much of this is very dangerous. It can lead to serotonin syndrome, which leads to coma and death in its worst cases. So you have to be very careful about doctor shopping and getting prescribed medications that interact on the same receptors as serotonin. For instance, you may not want to be on a couple of different SSRIs or anything that increases this in the synaptic cleft. You'll see in drug labels almost always not to take monoamine oxidase inhibitors while you're on an SSRI medication. That is because they increase levels of nearly all trace amines and neurotransmitters that monoamine oxidase A and B enzymes regulate in the brain. So if you, they're called MAOIs by acronym. They're very uncommonly prescribed. The UK still does it to an extent, but not as much in the United States. Some foods, however, have MAOI activity. They inhibit the monoamine oxidase isoenzymes A and B. And we will discover more about that when we talk about dimethyltryptamine, which uses this same indole scaffold ring structure that I'm highlighting here and the other tryptaminic psychedelic drugs coming soon. Now, serotonin and dopamine are not the same thing. We've covered dopamine. These get crossed up a lot. They don't talk to the same receptors. They don't elicit the same biological responses. However, both of them do have a role in mood, and there's generally a trifecta involved in that, one of which will be the discussion point of the next video. So we have dopamine, which we've covered, serotonin, which we've now covered, and coming soon, norepinephrine. After which, I'll start talking more about the pharmaceutical molecules that have been devised to work on the receptors to increase these in their concentration in the central nervous system to battle depression and anxiety. And that'll be a full series also on this playlist. Have a lovely day. Until next time, norepinephrine's coming soon.